coming off an amazing adjustment at Judah Street Clinic in San Francisco, California. I'm Schmitty, and this is Talkin' Schmidt. Today on the show is the butcher, Diego Buccieri. Diego is from Buenos Aires, Argentina, and came to San Francisco to chop up the entire city with his kickflip back tail at Hubba Hideout, backside 180 Wallenberg, his San Jose Street double set Ollie, list goes on. Homie handled some shit and then some. He turned pro for Think Skateboards and eventually rode for Toy Machine. Now Diego is married with a child, living happily in Spain, owning and operating Cleaver Skateboards, and most recently put out a video with his good friend, Roberto Aleman, entitled Got It, to honor the loss of Jake and P-Stone. He's a huge Oasis fan and has no hesitation in telling you who his favorite Gallagher brother is. Liam. Always. Yeah, fuck no. I don't like no. He sucks. Yeah, I like them. Okay, kids. Today we get to announce the winner of the $80 Talking Schmidt gift card for naming, in order, all the voices of my intro. Before we announce it, here's the answer. Starting out with... Eric J. It's cool, like tonight is the night. Jeremy Fish. Dan Drahobel. P Stone. Oh, big dogs in. Ronnie Sandoval. Schmitty. Ryan McWhorter. The Bad. 96 times. Schmitty. Lizzie Armano. Thanks, Schmitty. Jake We Phelps, on? Schmitty. Senator Cranston. Alex Horn. Ron Allen. Tim McKenney. I shit my pants. Evan Becker. Sneaky. Hey, roll the decks. It's fucking deep. Darren Navaretta for the ones. The ones, the ones. Trixie Ashley Trujillo. Who is this guy? He thinks he's tough shit. Arco. What's up? Mike Archimedes. Chris Pastris. Dune. We're tastemakers. And Big Hungry. Come on, Smitty. What the fuck? And if you get the end one where it says. You really are doing it, but no one did, but that wasn't part of the question. But that actually is Mud Honey from a concert I went to at the Warfield where I lost my ID. They found it, brought it up on stage, and said, This is Greg Smith's driver's license. Greg Smith could be anyone. Let's hear it for Greg Smith. Anyway, now for the winner. And the winner is. David Ricky from <laughs> Fort Wayne, Indiana. Thanks for playing. We're going to have another contest soon with a $100 gift card to Blue Plate. Details later this episode? Next episode? Coming soon. I also want to give a big, big shout out to Backdoor Shop in North Carolina. Shout out. Shout out. They actually made a pretty damn substantial order and are carrying Talking Schmidt out there. So we are officially. <laughs> that's right, kids. We are officially in North Carolina. If you need the gear, get to Backdoor Skate Shop. They've been in the biz for 26 years. So legit, definitely. Big love, guys. Thanks for the support. Shout out. The phone lines have been really super quiet during this pandemic, but look who we got here. It's our friend from Shieldless Magazine. What up, Schmitty? This is Nick and Ruben from Quarantine Call with Shieldless Mag. What's going on, Schmitty? Greetings from the road. We're currently on a road trip, moving myself from Portland to San Diego. Wanted to return the favor for you leaving us a voicemail. Here's Ruben with his first question. All right, Schmitty. So my question is, which company's team in skateboarding would you compare to the legacy of the SF Giants and why? We know you got a good answer for that one. My question is, post-quarantine, cross-country road trip, dream team, who are you bringing in the van? Filmers, photographers, skaters, whoever you want. Gas is paid for, food is covered. Who are the ultimate road dogs? Thanks again, Schmitty. Thank you for being on our podcast, episode 22. 
Hope you're having a good one. Thanks again, Schmitty. Stay safe. That's too easy. Anti-hero for sure. The 1-8, which we all know is Matt Kane. Tony Trujillo threw out the first pitch of a Giants game, and he's got the uh, SF Giants colorway for the van shoe. They also had the tribute board, Champions of Nothing, and they're from SFCA, just seven-minute walk from where the Giants play. So, uh, yeah, anti-hero for sure. Dream road trip starts with Cranny for sure. He's the catalyst to a good time. Uh, photographer, tough one, but we're going to go all load up. Mm, yeah, we're going to load up Big Blue. We're going to maybe get the flag covered so no one thinks we're Trump supporters. And we're going to head out to Montana with the photographer being Mr. Fatback himself, Joe Brook. Uh, I'll be filming, but definitely bring multiple cameras, cranny and a Super 8. One other filmer, fuck, tough one. Filmer, filmer, who do I want to work with? Filmer. I'm going to say Matt Bublitz. We're going to go Bublitz. He's got some of the best B-roll in the biz, good attitude, and the dude rips on a board. So, yeah, Matt Bublitz. Skate crew, let's start with the Hemi, 2014 Skater of the Year. My good friend Wes Kramer, he's in the van. Boom. Ah, yeah. Uh, we're going to probably have to beg, but Dan Drahobel, you're a must. So let's get Danny in there. Uh, we're going to round up the bod and the gut for fucking shenanigans and good time and the history of broship. Uh, they've been family for days. Evan Smith, Ronnie Sandoval, Sammy Baca, for sure. Let's round it out with two of the best in the biz, Ishad Ware and GT, Grant Taylor. Uh, pretty sure that I'll get the job done for an article, a video, and a shit ton of fun. Barbecuing, laughing, and fucking whatever it takes. Road trip, yeah pandemic it's been a minute let's do it uh also since this is i dream a genie make a wish vibes i'd love to have a second van so we could either have a ladies van or a mix them depending on the vibes with uh let's see mimi noop lizzie armano alicia lee brianna and fabi nicole house and alana smith and CB and Nora, if there's room. <laughs> Be super fun to camp with the ladies and hit a bunch of parks and collect street clips the whole way through. Fuck, dude. Thanks for using that anchor uh, hotline and calling in. Appreciate that. You guys are first to do that. And, I'm gonna send you that t -shirt. and before we start, I just want to say... I know the audio is not optimal. We're dealing with Zoom, technology, Wi-Fi, long distance. But this is my good friend from Spain on Zoom. So I hope you're able to bear with the audio and listen as we discuss some good times with epic stories of amazing friends and times. In other words, it's going to break your head. And now for my interview with the second most famous Diego in all of Argentina. This is Diego Buchgeri, the butcher, and you're listening to Talking to Smith. It's cool, like tonight is the night. Here we go again. Just give it the old cause turn, isn't it? All big dogs in. Smitty! 96 times, Smitty. Thanks, Smitty. We on? Smitty? Talking Schmidt. That's called going to the hospital, bitch. I can <laughs> shit my pants. Glad. Your Rolodex is fucking deep. It's right. about the one. The one. The one. Who is this guy? He thinks he's tough shit. What's up? We're tastemakers. Come on, Smitty. What the fuck? Let's hear it for Greg Smith. Yeah! Is it my imagination or have I finally found the guest I'm looking for? In Vivo de España, we're dedicating this one to Father Carosella. Please welcome Diego the Butcher, Buccieri. <laughs> What's, What's up, D? On? 
How are you? Here in Spain. Dude, it's 8 a.m. SF and what, 4 p.m. Spain? Uh, it's actually 7. No, it's uh, it's 5. 520. Almost oh, 520. 520. Okay. 518. And you're yeah. in what city? I'm in Elche, Alicante. All right. You see, you see in Roberto? I'm going to see Roberto on Friday. I actually stayed with him uh, yesterday. Oh, so yeah, he's in town. He's in town with his uh, future wife. No way. Uh, is he engaged? Yes. Yes, he is. Yes. Yes. He's actually getting married on Friday. Um, they were, they were going to do like a big party, but then due to like current situation, they had to like postpone the party for next year. Ah. Uh, but they, they, but you know, since it takes forever to get an appointment, you know, to turn all the papers in, like, uh, they decided to get married, uh, this year and then next year they're going to do the, the, the bigger party. No way. Okay. Cause, uh. I'm engaged too, and we've been like throwing that idea around. Like, do we put it off and have a bigger wedding, or do we just get married and say fuck it, and then when this thing passes, have like a party or something? You know, like kind of hard to figure it out. Because you're like, hopefully, you only get married once, and then uh, you well, want it to be like a good, like the way you exactly. wanted it to be. Exactly, and 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 actually, like Danny LeBron was was supposed to get married in uh, May too, and he had to cancel it. But he actually moved the whole wedding for uh, for next year. Okay. Yeah, we were so thinking I'm about a, maybe having the boy in the bubble theme, so everyone just shows up in the bubble. <laughs> that would be so good, though. That would be really good, actually. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. That would be so a good one. Say, like on the dance floor, just roll it around yeah. in bubbles. Uh, okay, well, let's go way back in the way back machine. Uh, get some info. Uh, you were born and raised in the capital, Argentina, right? Buenos Aires. In Buenos Aires, I was born in April twenty third of nineteen seventy seven. Damn. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what age did you get into skateboarding? Like, how did how did you get into skateboarding? Well, my my brother had one of those like plastic. Uh, skateboards like the little ones, the uh -huh. banana board. Uh, so he was kind of like fucking around with that one, and, and I was just like riding it, you know, like kneeling down and just riding it around. But then, um, every summer we were going to uh, to Mar del Plata, the beach town that it's uh, for kind of 400 kilometers from, from the city of Buenos Aires. And our neighbor actually had a, a, a proper uh, skateboard. Uh, and I just kind of started playing around with, with that skateboard. And then by the age of 10, my, my mom bought me a skateboard. It was like a really shitty one, but it was, it was like the full size skateboard. Uh, it was like a, it was like a bootleg Al Peralta or something. It had like, instead of rib tape, it had like, uh, like this sanded glue and, and, uh, it had a light bulb, uh, light bulb, uh, sprayed on it. It was so shitty that, that, that board probably lasted like a couple of months until I figured out that that thing wasn't even rolling around. But yeah, it started around that, around that time. Like, when I was And then were there American, um, skateboards in Argentina back then or no? Yeah. There were, did you have like a skate yeah, I mean, shop? Santa Cruz, and uh, there was one shop that carried all the Santa Cruz products, and then um, there was one that carried all the powerful Peralta uh, uh, products. And then, like, a, a few other little shops will have, like, you know, Vision and, and a couple other brands, but really small. I mean, back then, they were super expensive, uh, mm. and a lot of small, like, local brands were, were making boards there. So it was... It was you know, really hard to actually buy a, a U.S. board at that time. Oh. For me to have, like, a, a Santa Cruz board, that was, like, my first board. Uh, somebody had to bring it from, from the States because it was, like, almost impossible to buy it in Argentina. Oh, wow. What board was it? Do you remember? It was a, it was a Jeff Kendall, the graffiti one. Oh, okay. Actually, yeah. Actually... I was like looking through uh, through stuff that we that we had here at my at my parents in law house and uh, and actually have that reissue board signed by by Kendall. 
No way. Because I, I told him the story, so he, uh, he sent me one of those boards. Signed oh, sick. So what sparked it for you, though? Like, your brother got you into it, and then, like, how did you kind of, like, take it to the next level? Or, like, did you see videos or magazines or other kids in town? Or It was, at that time, uh, there were, like, two, uh, two small groups of skaters in my neighborhood. The, the older ones were into, like, punk rock and, and uh, hardcore. Uh, so those guys were kind of, like, leading the way. Uh, and then there were a few younger kids who started skating at the same time as me. Mm. And that was kind of like my crew. But it was like I, I grew up in like a small neighborhood. So it was like really hard to get to get videos or, or, or even get any info. You know, like at that time, getting getting a Thrasher magazine was like really difficult. You have to go to like a certain place in downtown and buy it and it will be like maybe six or seven months old and uh same thing with the videos it was like getting a copy from a friend that got a copy from another video and like uh <laughs> you know we will do like vhs parties you know like we'll just go to a, a, one of the dude's house and watch the videos uh but maybe that video was like you know two years old or something yeah but that was kind of like how we got into it and then uh the whole music and everything around it was kind of like what, what got me into, you know, the whole culture part of it. Who were some of the early guys that, like, you were stoked on? Who, what videos were those um, and stuff? Well, I mean, there was, like, a, a Savannah Slama video. There was uh, the Santa Cruz video. I um, can't remember the name of it, but it's the one that uh, one part who, who was a Jason Jesse or, or Eric Dressen, someone got out of jail or something. Oh, was yeah. That Maybe uh, Streets of Fire. Or, Streets of Fire. I think, yeah, that's, I think the, that's one. It was the one with Nadas doing the, the, the fire yeah, hydrant. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that filming. one's so classic. So, yeah. So, so Nadas was definitely one of them. Uh -huh. Because, you know, the I also loved the fucking haircut that he had at that time. Uh -huh. uh, it was like a surfy, surfy uh, way. Um, yeah. It was like... I was looking more into like the, the street skaters because we didn't have any ramps at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, so Gons, not us and, and uh, Tommy Guerrero and all those guys, you know? Um, but again, it's like, I will get a Thrasher magazine every, you know, whatever, five months or something and just study it, you know, like, like looking over and over and over and just, just get all that, all that info that I could, you know? Yeah. Uh, and describe like Buenos Aires a little bit compared to the U.S. Like it's not the smoothest streets and stuff, right? Like to find spots to skate, like is it more challenging? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, at, at that time it was like the 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 era of like jump ramps, but we would just steal wood from like different places and build our own like little jump ramps. Uh, so any street that it was like okay to ride over, like we'll just we'll just use that. Uh -huh. uh, but then as I was getting older, I started to meet people in different places and I would just go into like downtown and skate a plaza that had like a smoother ground. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, Buenos Aires is a massive city. So it's like just to get around, it takes forever from one place to the other. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so we will kind of try to like whatever during the weekends, just go skate, you know, like the financial area and, and you know, escape the spots around that 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 little zone. Because um, if you try to like skate from one side of the other, like you know, it will never happen. It's it's too big. Right. But yeah, the, the surfaces were like super shitty, and and they're still they still are some of them. But um, but you know, with the time, they've been building more and more stuff to skate. You know. Yeah. What was your uh, go-to jump ramp trick? Um. I would just do judos Judo. uh, or, or the, what was it called? The kind of like the tweak, like the mosquito. Was that the one? Called? Oh yeah. We used to call it mosquito. It was, it was more like a, it was like in between a method and, and whatever, like a technique, but grab like backside. Yeah. Like a grasser, like but tweaking. No, like, a, like a mute, like a Japan grab, but grab like from, from, you know, backside. Right. It was like, we used to call it a mosquito, whatever. But yeah, I think like hippie twist and all that stuff. What's the hippie twist? 
It was like the the 360 uh, early grab. <laughs> I know. I don't know if that was that was called the same, but we used to call it the hippie twist. Sick. Uh, <laughs> and what was it like skating around town? Like, was it dangerous? Like, would you ever get chased? Like, do, what was people's impression of skaters in Argentina? Well, at that time, it was like super super underground you know like you know if if we would skate like downtown uh all all the security guards will, will be like dude just fucking get a job you know like yeah. you could fucking stop doing this stop breaking things like we're always kind of like uh the the, the bad kids uh-huh. uh, and i mean most of the friends that i had at that time were like really trouble kids Yep. Uh, you know, we'll just go skate something and they will hit the security guard and like, we'll always try to do something bad. Um, but yeah, it was like, there was no info about it. Uh, but then like a couple of TV shows started showing skateboarding a little, a little more. Then there was like a, kind of like a, a, a TV show that it was like super uh, popular. We'll do interviews with them. So that was kind of like, what got skateboarding a little more um, uh, well seen uh, to other people, but not until like, you know, maybe 50 years ago, like skateboarding was something that, that people uh, will, will be uh, interested at or will see it as something positive, you know? Right. And did you guys have any parks? We, there were, I mean, the only park that it was around the time that I started skating was Moon Road, the one that you skated, the big bowl. Oh, in the mall. Uh, yeah, 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 the one in the mall. But that was like an hour and a half away in a bus for me. Yeah. Uh, and it was like a giant bowl, you know, like a 10 or 11 feet deep bowl. Mm-hmm. That, you know, like, I was not able to skate that, that's for sure. You know, for me, it was all, this, it was all like street skating and then jump ramps. Um, but then, you know, not until... Uh, whatever, when I was like 16 or 17, that we actually started building our own parks. You know, it, it was all street skating, basically. You know? mm. And so you were like looking at the mags and studying the mags and stuff and obviously dreaming of United States. Mm. Like well, you're... I mean, it, was, it was always the, the, the you know, as, as a little kid, uh, that was kind of like the only thing like that you could see possible if you wanted to live you know from skateboarding so there was no way to make money in argentina if you were a skateboarder so like if you wanted to to make a living you had to like go to the states Mm -hmm. um but then like you know none of my friends were able to travel to the states because it was really expensive right so so with 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 all this era of like us trying to put together contests and building parks, we were at least able to travel, whatever, to Brazil or travel to Uruguay or travel to Chile and meet new people. And, and you know, that was kind of like what, what triggered, okay, we need to, you know, if we're going to like our neighbor's countries, we need to go to Europe now, or we need to go to the States. We need to meet more people. And that's what, that's, that's the best thing about skateboarding. It's like meeting new people, you know? Yeah. Not, not that many guys, from my generation traveled to the States, but uh, we actually traveled to Europe. We came to Europe for like the, the summer contest before, before going to the States. Oh, okay. Um, Cause it was easier to s- see everybody in one, one spot. You know what I mean? You will go to Munster and you will see fucking Costan and Sheffy and everybody at one place. Uh-huh. And you will get to hang out with them for a full, basically a whole month. Right. Yeah. So, what was that like? That was your first trip out of was, the country. Was to Europe? Uh, n- not out of the country, but like the the, the big trip for sure. It was. Um, I mean, I, I I went to Brazil and like a couple other countries before. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, in nineteen ninety six, it was um, ten of my friends and myself. We we all like bought a ticket and just and, got the and Eurail. Well, yeah, I mean, we, we, I think we flew into Belgium and then we did the whole circuit of, of, you know, the whole month with barely any money. So it's like, it was, it was insane. Sleeping in the streets, like going to the, going to the contest, 
uh, meeting people, staying with them, like the classic all way to travel, you know. Who were some of the early people you met? Like, who were some of the first pros you met from the States? Well, it was it was crazy that the first contest we went to was the, the Northampton Redlands. And I was wearing a toy machine shirt uh, from the shop that I used to ride for. And the first, pe- the, the first person I saw when I opened the door was Ed Templeton. Oh, damn. But he, like, he, like, looked at me, looked at the shirt, kind of like, we stared yes. at each other, like, you know, like, yes. And then, you know, like, <laughs> and, and Ed remembers that. It's, it's super crazy that Ed, after all this year, remember, remembers really? that. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. sick. And so did that, did you kind of meet people in Europe and that, how, is that how, like, it came so that you would go to the United States? Sort of, yeah, because we, I mean, we went to all those contests and we got to skate, you know, right next to the people that you look up to and, and you will see in videos. And I remember the, the one thing that, that Jeff Rowley said that, you know, like from seeing magazines and videos, you will always see the best of the U.S. guys or, or whoever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then once he actually skated with some of those guys in person, he realized that they weren't, not that they weren't good, but that they were not like superheroes that they would land every trick every every time. Right. So for me it was kinda like that same that same situation. I showed up, I went to the the, the street course and and I saw that, you know, Coston, you know, like uh, was not like a machine that it would take him like a few tries to land a trick or or other guys, you know, like okay. it was it it was like a good way to to see that um that we at least had a chance or something like that. You know what I mean? Right. That, that they were no like superhumans. Skateboarding's hard for everyone. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, of course I guys that they're like definitely way better than others. And, uh, but yeah, that was kind of like my, my first, uh, impression. And that's when I was like, you know, this is a contest. This is cool, but I want to see the real thing. I want to go to the States and I want to skate with this guys, you know, the real yeah. sweet spots. So how did that trip come? How did the first time to U.S., how did it all happen? Um, well, that was 96 and then came back home. And that was like sort of like a, a, a rough time for me because my, my dad passed away a year previous that. And then my mom passed away right after I came back from that trip. Yeah. So I was like, at that time, I was, I was actually studying uh, graphic design at school. Mm-hmm. Uh, college and and i was like what am i doing you know it's like if i want to you know pursue this dream or something i need to do it now like you know i can study later and that's when i started like saving up money and then uh in 98 i in february of 98 i went to the states with uh with my buddy skira from chile and uh that's it you know we we just bought a ticket and we just went for it to i was actually there for 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 the beginning of it. Chilean Prince. Yeah, yeah Chilean Prince. Wait, so where'd you go? You flew into LA? No, we bought, we bought like the cheapest ticket to Florida, to Miami. Oh. And then once we arrived, we all met there. We bought a domestic flight to San Diego, going to, doing a layover in uh, Las Vegas. So we actually got to skate for a few hours in, in Vegas uh, before we, before we went. Yeah, so it, was, it was super cool. But yeah, we we had no plans. I mean, we flew into um, SD. We were there for a month. We stay in a like a, a super ghetto uh, hostel in downtown, and then we got to meet people and we just kind of drove around. Uh, then we ended up in LA uh, for a few weeks, and then uh, my. We had a friend in SF uh, that that told us, you know, like you can you can just come stay with me and, and whatever, you know, like for a month or whatever you need. And that's when my buddy Guille and I, you know, uh, took the Greyhound to SF and uh, and stayed there for a month. And that's when you know, like, faded all the spots and got to meet everybody there. Who who did you meet in SF? Funny thing is that the girl Mariela, the the, the the girl that we were staying with, uh, it was Greg Hunt's 
old roommate. So they used to live together. Oh, okay. Uh, when we showed up at her house, Greg was still getting his stuff. Uh, so I, sh I showed him like some of the footage that we were filming during the trip. He was like, I think at that time he was like started filming for, for Trample. So he was like, yeah, just, you know, let me know. Let's just meet him, speedo skate, you know, like if you want to film something. But yeah, at that time, my English was so shitty that I couldn't, like I was barely able to communicate with people. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, I got I got to meet all the Pier 7 guys, like Carl and and actually Luca Sin, he lives in Barcelona now, so that he was like one of the first dudes that, uh, that I skated with. Right. Uh, and then... Dan Levy, he was like filming for Thrasher at that time. Uh -huh. So we kind of started filming some stuff. Cairo was always getting with friend, with with him. So um, that was kind of like my my crew, you know. Uh, we were just going to spots and, and seeing people and skated with them, you know, just like freestyling it. And you kind of already knew some of the spots from the magazines. Like it was almost like tour, tourist, like I got to go see well, yeah. this, I got to go yeah. see that. I mean, we... we took the Greyhound from, I think it was like Santa Ana or something to SF. It was like an overnight one. And we like got dropped off at the station and we went straight to Hubba Hideout because that was like the thing that I wanted to skate. First spot um, in yeah, SF. I remember, like, I remember so going sick. there, no slide in it with the bag there, everything <laughs> there. So it's like, just so like overnight sleeping on the bus, like just not yeah. getting a fuck. Um, but yeah, I knew that, you know, Wallenberg, Pier 7, all the SF spots were there. But that was like another thing that, uh, that kind of opened my mind when I went to the States is that I, w I remember seeing all these spots in, uh, in, in magazines or videos. And I, and I thought, OK, you can take the bus from this one to this one. Like I thought that everything was like way closer. Mm. But then when, when I got to the States, I realized that you needed a car. You needed to drive for like. 40 something hours uh, 45 minutes to a spot and that it was like more difficult you know right uh, but yeah it was it was like a such a such a good experience for for me and for my friends for sure and is that that trip you met uh jake and mickey right yeah yeah so um while i was staying at that at that girl's house um one of the days i was like skating with uh, I, I was skating in Pier 7 and Greg was there and he's like uh, he's like do you want to try to film something I'm like well I want to go to Wallenberg and I went to 180 Wallenberg because you know I skated Wallenberg before and it all ate it and I told my friend hey let's just go there because I can backside 180 uh, and so so we went there and he actually filmed it with the, the 16 millimeter camera that day um, and then the next day I got a call from from actually Nicky Reyes. I don't know how he got my number, but they uh, they called the Nicky called the house and he's like, "Hey, I heard you 180 to Wallenberg. It's like, can you uh, can you do it again? You know, we'll we'll give you like some boards and t-shirts and and the guy from Thrasher wants to shoot it. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I had all, like my friend was obviously translating all this, and I'm like, let's go. Uh -huh. The next day, we went there, and um, we went back, and Luke Luke was there, ready to shoot, and then Cardiel and, and, and Julian were there skating Wallenberg, so I was, like, tripping out. Oh. So, so that was, like, that was the second time I did it, that was the one that it was shot for, for Thrasher. And no ramp? No, 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 no. And and I didn't like going through the fence, so I would just push from from that one little alley where they place the straight uh, from the back. Yeah, 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 straight there. Damn, like not like that. that many people all uh, did tricks down it without a ramp. You did tricks for sure. You know, you know, it's like there's no way to get speed for it. But but yeah, like the first first uh, couple of tricks, I remember people were actually bombing the hill and going. Yeah, like the Mark fence. came through the fence and. But Ollie. I didn't like that way because didn't Gerwer do the same thing? Mm -hmm. I think I think Gerwer did. Frank like yeah. went through the fence, but it was better for for regular fruited because they can like carve around and, and hit it straight. But for me, it was like it was like so weird that I'd rather just like throw my board and, and, and jump straight at it. So. 
So was Jake and Mickey at Wallenberg that day? No, no, none of, none of them were there. Um, Just Cardiel and so, Julian uh, and Luke. Yeah, and, and, and Cardiel and Julian left. I mean, I, I, I remember I started trying it, and then by the time I was, I landed it, like, I think those guys were gone, maybe. I, I can't oh. remember. Okay. But the thing is, like, that was, like, maybe a, a week or two before I, before I had to go back to RG, and... Through one of my friends in Argentina, I I, I met Bob Bernquist, who lived in, in NSF at that time. Oh, yeah. uh, so I called him and I'm like, dude, do you think I can get some boards from you or something? And he's like, dude, just, you know, come on the house and we'll go to, uh, or, or call Mickey and just go to Deluxe and he'll give you boards and stuff. And we ended up just going there. Like, I think it was like a week before I had to go oh. back to RG. So I showed up at Deluxe. And Mickey was there, so he like gave me all this product, and 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 then he drove us to Thrasher, and that's where Luke and Jake showed me the blueprints of the magazine where I had the the content page doing the 180. Oh, it was sick! Like that quick, yeah, it was that quick. Pfft, yeah, it, I was like tripping for sure. <laughs> and that's that's the same day that they were like, hey, there's somebody in in here that who wants to meet you, you know, like and and I walked in and it was hostel. Just some some random dude like speaking Spanish to me and SF and ended up being the owner of everything. So, so it was what, like, what was that like? Did you I know mean, that he? Did you know of him yet or no? Dude, I, I had no idea. Oh, okay. I was like clueless at that time. Uh huh. No, so no, no. I mean, like, I, I remember like just you know, I knew who Jake was and Nikki. You know, both of those guys were. Uh, but, but when I walked into Fausto's office, offices, I was like, who is this guy? You know? So he's like, he started talking to me in, in, in Spanish with the Argentinian accent. And then he like kind of told me the story and, and he was like, yeah, I've been waiting to find somebody from Argentina who I can sponsor and blah, blah, blah. And, um, so he basically told me like, you know, go back to Argentina and then we'll, we'll send you boards. And then when you're ready to come back, you know, uh, just come back and we'll hook you up. Uh, so I went back to RG for like a couple of months and then I was able to go back to the state, I think like three, four months later or something. And that's what I just went by myself. Again, no English, just like going for it. Uh, yeah. That's, that's 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 where um, that's when you know I stay with uh, with Bill and and Paul in Palo Alto, and right. that's the time around where where we all met. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what if you had been able to speak English better? Do you think that you might have? I think when you first came to US, you kind of were hoping to skate for the deluxe company, yeah, like Spitfire. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it was. At that time, honestly, like I was like, I remember going to going to Deluxe and Nikki was like, "Hey, what size do you ride?" And I'm like, "Whatever, it's free, you know." Like I don't, I don't give a shit. I like this board, but if it's like bigger or smaller, it's that I, I don't care. Uh -huh. um, but but uh, of course, you you like some brands more than other. Uh, but what, when I met Fausto, you know. Uh, I remember going back to RG and he called me and he's like, Hey, you can, you can write for think and, and this and this and this. And I'm like, whatever, you know, like I don't care. Okay. But you know, at that time think was sick because it was like Phil and Paul and, 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 and all those guys. And then I met yeah. Pancho who actually spoke Spanish. Too, so, right. Um, so it was cool for, for the first, you know, uh, for the first couple of years. Yeah. But of course, you know, you as a kid have like, you know, your dreams of writing for one brand or other. Being an SF and skating with Cairo a bunch, we we kind of like skated the same thing too, uh, or, the, or the same spots. And, and I was more, uh, at one point I was feeling more like writing for real than writing for, um, for things. I have more, more similar things to that, to that brand. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, basically, I had to quit to, you know, to write for somebody else. Right. So. Uh, and how it's how did good. 
How did uh, Jake came up with the butcher? How did the nickname the butcher happen? At that time, I was staying with uh, with Bill and, and Paul and Alonso, so Bill couldn't skate because he had a, a knee uh, a ACL surgery done. Uh-huh. Uh, so he was like writing stuff for Thrasher, and he was going to the office every morning. So I would just drive with Bill seven in the morning, go to the office, and then whatever around ten or 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 noon, I would just go out with Luke and shoot stuff. So I was always hanging out with uh, with with Jake, and those guys had his office. And so he's always he was like always like giving me uh, giving me crap around Brazilians that all the Brazilians have nicknames. What about Argentina? Like, what's your nickname? And I'm like, I don't really have one. Uh, but but some some friends call me Bucha, you know. Uh, my brother Bucha because of the, my nickname uh, my last name. But some people call me uh, calls me Bucha, and he's like, oh, it's a butcher, perfect. And I, you know it makes sense you're from argentina you love me and it's like you're the butcher your hand everything fits so you're the butcher and i'm like cool but at that time i didn't even know what butcher meant so i had to go to my dictionary you know like and look for it and i'm like oh got me say that's fine you know so it's like uh-huh. that's, that's how we stayed you know and then like how soon after that did he go i'm gonna take you to pete the ox and put you in front of the meat um that was just a month or something right after because we were <laughs> he's like we're gonna work on it he's like if you want to get seen you need it we need to work on an interview you need to be in every magazine so it's like you're gonna shoot with luke you're gonna you're gonna make a list with tricks that you need to do uh, uh so he's like you need to have like a rail trick a transition trick a switch trick a flip trick so like i started you know going through all the mags and, and watching videos and making a list with like tricks that I wanted to do for the interview. Uh-huh. Uh, and then one day he's, he's like, Hey, I, I want you to meet like one of my friends, my good friend Pete, you know, like, so yeah, uh, we drove to, to the meat shop where, where Pete was working. And, and so we, uh, so we shot that, that, uh, that portrait with all the meat racks and stuff. So it was like super cool. Mm-hmm. Were you tripping out on that stuff, or were you just like, "This is incredible"? Like, no, 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 not at all. I mean, it wasn't. I mean, it's not that I that I worked at a butcher, but I wasn't like tripping out about seeing like you know cows hanging from there. You know, like, how soon? When was like Jake's first trip to Argentina? That was the one with Cardiel, right? Yeah, that was like. So I think I went back to Argentina around uh, May from my first very first trip. Mm-hmm. And that was like the next summer. So that was like 90, it was like January of 99, I think. Oh, okay. So a few, a few months after my, my second trip. So that was after my, Phil died. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause we, I, I stayed with Phil on my second trip, I think for like three months. And that's when he was able to skate and we took that one road trip. And that's when he uh, when he died in a car accident. Right. Um, but right after that, uh, that's when we were that that's when we went to uh, Argentina that that summer. And we what went was with Keystone and Cardiel and Julian and Luke. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What was it like? What was Phil like meeting him and and the time that you spent with him? He, I mean, again, going back to like not knowing any English, I was just like. You know, going skating during the day and then going back with them at, at afternoon and drinking beers. And it's weird because even though I couldn't speak English, I feel like we had a lot of good conversations. And I think that's like the drunk language, of course, you know. But yeah, we spent like, like those during those three months, we spent a lot of time together. So I got really close to him. He was kind of like my my mentor, you know, between him and Jake, it was like, you know, the, 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 the good devil and, and the bad devil on your shoulders, you know, the <laughs> angel and the, the evil. That, it was kind of like that, you know, yeah. I will have the one dude giving you like good advices and then the other one giving you like, you know, better or, or, you uh-huh. know, but he thought it was cool. So, so it was right. good. It was really nice to have those two guys, you know, in the beginning. 
Yeah. yeah. And you, you had, you knew who Phil was before you came to us. Like you had seen him skating a little or no? I, I, I knew who he was, but, but then like once I met him, like just started to see more stuff and videos and stuff because I was like, you know, I'm, I'm basically living with this dude. So I got to see like a lot of videos and, and since I couldn't skate with him because he was hurt, um, mm. I remember just seeing all those thrasher videos and all the trips and seeing like, this is one of like the best dudes, you know? Yeah. Uh, but even, even that one day that we got to skate, it was insane. It was like the very first day that he got to skate after like eight months of a knee surgery. And he was just like flying around, you know, like nothing ever happened. Right. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? It was, you guys went on a trip to Arcata on the way to Burnside, right? Yeah. So it was, it was Jake, uh, Coco. Uh, oh, Coco was with Luke. you. Yeah, Coco was there, yeah. Who else was on that trip, man? We were like four or five, I remember. Uh-huh. Uh, Small so, trip. So we, we drove, yeah, we drove there. We actually got to skate the local park. Uh, then we met some locals there. They told us about an uh, indoor mini ramp. We skated the mini ramp. We drank some beers. And the dude's like, yeah, you guys can like crash at my house. Uh, so we all got, got our sleeping bags out. And we, we crashed at the dude's living room. Uh, and then I guess Bill met some chick at the, at the park. And, and she invited him to go to a party. So Phil's like, hey, I'm out later. I'll see you guys later. So he like, he was gone. Uh, but then when we got up in the morning, he never came back. And then uh, we were just having breakfast. We actually went to the park, looked for him, uh, and we were just having breakfast. And, and Greg C. sent Luke uh, a message, I think, or called him something, that somebody found Phil dead in a car um, that night. It was, like, super crazy. Because yeah. the, the chick who was driving the car... She was like super wasted. Phil was too, but he was like laying in the in the back seat. So the chick was driving through like a windy road and like just kind of fell off the cliff. And then when she kind of like realized what happened, she got out of the car, ran away and, and called the ambulance or the cops and something. And she didn't even know that Phil was in the back seat. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was super fucked up. Oh, I didn't know about that. But then like when, when the, the, the cops came... They were like towing the car back up, and they found Phil die- dead in the in the back seat. Oh my so, God. so yeah, it wow. was the worst thing ever. And so you were at breakfast with Jake and Luke when you guys got the yeah. call from Greg. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we were all tripping. I mean, we we basically drove back I, at that time. I was like, dude, like, you know, my parents passed away like not that long ago, and now now like one of my new best friends is it's gone. Yeah, so I was like, you know, like I, I, I was kind of tripping. Like, what should I do? Should I go back to Argentina? Should I stay here? And I remember Jake was like, dude, don't worry. You know, like we'll take care of you. And, and you know, and that was kind of like the sort of relationship that I had with Jake, kind of like my, my older brother doing, you know, through all these years. Mm. So. And that's kind of when you and I got close because yeah. you couldn't really stay at Zawanich's anymore because... Phil not being there was just kind of too crazy, right? Well, it was it was just fucked. But yeah, that's when we we met and we started to fucking film every day, go on trips, and then friends from Argentina would come over and and yeah. we'll do our own little trips. Just so waking like, up oh, every morning to the wedding yeah. singer, <laughs> <laughs> fucking eating donuts like crazy, like yeah, just insane, man. Too oh, many, man. too many memories. Yeah. Uh, what was the day you kickflip backtailed uh, Hubba Hideout? Was that did you? Was that the same day or like in a couple of days? You did some. You did like a couple of things in SF that were pretty. But that very same day, I did that. We went back to Thrasher, and and Lance Dawes was there, and and he's like. He was like kind of tripping and he's like, oh, he did that. That's sick. Now, like, we can just, I have this double set for you. If you kick it back to Haba, you can always double set. And I'm like, fuck it. 
I'm doing it. So we went to this double set in like the uh, the district with like all the Italian restaurants and stuff. It's North Beach. North, North Beach. Beach. Is that what it's Oh yeah, shit! The like, one in the alleyway. Yeah, the one that Ernie Torres all it is yeah, later yeah, on. Yeah, 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 yeah. I tried that double set and I was out for like maybe two months or something. <laughs> Valparaiso. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Holy so I basically, shit. like, can't play back till Habo, and I'm like, I can do anything, and just no later. No, did no, I? You're going to bed. Oh, and what was the story between, I think, early on when Jake and Mickey first took you out, they were just taking you to, like, the gnarliest shit, like, hey, you want to try this? And you're like, Yeah, what? yeah. I mean, I think it was, like... That one that on time. Potrero and 16th, I think, right? Yeah, By the gas I mean, station? Yeah, I mean, it's, like, those guys, <laughs> like, one day, Mickey, uh, or, it was, like, we're driving, we're driving Jake's car. No, that was actually, you know what? It was like the first trip after I met Fausto. I think it was that that very same day. Oh. Uh, so Jake is like, yeah, we'll just go to spots. So he like took me to the gnarliest shit in SF, took me to the Cardiel Rail, the one that he had that that never yeah. ever covered, uh-huh. that old, old like dirt on his face. Yeah. Uh, uh, he took me to this one place that it's like, it was like a basically a quarter pipe into like all in this massive like concrete bowl, uh, like all the shit that it was just like almost impossible to do. <laughs> but yeah, just just driving with those guys like a, a, around the city, it was insane. Yeah, it was it was super fun. Rad. Do you have like one epic Felper story? I don't, way too many though. I don't yeah. know if I have one. Cool thing about Jake is that. Uh, when when I was living in Argentina, this maybe uh oh yeah when he went there for Christmas by yeah, himself yeah, yeah yeah so basically he like I got an email from from Mike Burnett and he's like hey Jake is Jake is going to Argentina tomorrow he's like here's here's his uh, itinerary and I'm like how come he's not calling me he's like I don't know he just told me to to send you this so that was the time that Jake didn't even have a cell phone or anything it was just uh-huh. like super hard to get a hold of him so yeah yeah so basically i got i got jake's flight info next day i go to the airport and jake's there you know my my wife was was here in spain at that time because she came came here yeah, she came here to spend uh christmas with her family but yeah. um but yeah jake showed up and he was there for christmas for like i think it was two weeks you know every single day we'll get up at seven um We'll have coffee and then just hit all the parks, every single park in, in around Buenos Aires. We drove to the beach too. It was like, that was like one of the best trips for sure. Right. You know, yeah. Jake is like a, a, a superstar in Argentina. Oh. So, uh, all my friends love Jake. So everywhere we'll go, he will just, you know, be friends with everybody. He will just get everything for free and, and <laughs> it, it, was, it was the best. It's Who was like, the guy that you introduced him to? Like he stayed with like some old guy there and like he became good friends with some like random dude. I don't know, man. It's like he, he it was met, like an older guy. Um, no, we, one of the, there's this super famous band in Argentina. It's called the Fabulosos Cadillacs. It's like the Fabulous Cadillacs. It's uh-huh. a band that it's like, big time like i mean they won like mtv awards and that like that level oh um, shit. so the dude flavio the 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 bass player he's been always like into surfing and and into, into skating and um so his kids all skate and he built like a small like wooden ball at his house and so so when jake was there i called him and i'm like hey flavio you know like jake is here you want to meet him and and we ended up going to this house, but he got like beyond wasted, you know, when we went there <laughs> and and we didn't stay there, but we spent like, you know, the whole day there. So, huh. but yeah, it was, it was, I mean, every, every day was like a fucking, like uh, a, a super fucking funny story. You know? Yeah. But yeah, it was, it was a, that was a good one. That was a good trip. And he met your grandma? Yeah, yeah, we we spent we spent uh, Christmas together. 
with my brother and my grandma. Yeah, yeah. What did she think of him? Well, I mean, I, I think like she met Jake before on the oh. trip with uh, with Keystone, but that was like years before. Uh, but she's, I mean, she was she was always used to like meeting all those like crazy people. Yeah, you know, because I always had people staying in my house when when they when they come to. Work, right. You know, so. Huh. But yeah, definitely a good one. And then uh, the story I wanted to tell too is the one where you all ate the double set <clears throat> in San Francisco. You were looking at that one in uh, San Jose school, and uh, Josh Casper came to Thrasher. Oh yeah, and he told Jake like, "Oh, I want to look at this double set," and then Jake called you on the phone, right? He was like, "Hey, you better go do it like now." <laughs> I looked at that double set for like a year or something. I would Forever, just go and yeah. look at it and, and, and think like, yeah, it's possible. But like, I don't know, man, I got to go on a trip and I don't want to hurt myself. And I always had like kind of put an excuse not to do it. And I was actually going to uh, to a contest that weekend. And Jake calls me and he's like, dude, Casper is coming to town to all your double set. <laughs> and I'm like, when? He's coming tomorrow. I'm like, dude, I'm leaving tomorrow. He's like, well, you better do it now. <laughs> so we, I went, I went, we, we went to Thrasher yeah. and, and, and Jake Gons and the dude with the dog. Remember the <laughs> fucking random dude? <laughs> we went to the double set and I did it. So it's like. Dude, who was the dude with the dog? I have no idea, but that's the dude with the dog. The Burnett dude with the dog and Gons was somehow there. Yeah, yeah, Gons was there. Oh, yeah, that's insane. Love that story. Loves the do, loves the dude with the dog. <laughs> I don't know who he was. It was Jake's buddy or something. <laughs> but he will always do that. He will always bring like one of his friends, some random like, guy. Yeah, random dude to be like, hey, this guy's gonna bust. You know, like yeah, come come and watch. But yeah, he was like, he was super hot that day. One of my favorite memories, I mean, we have so many, but um, one of them for sure is when your friend Lu Lucci came and, to visit us and mm -hmm. we took him to uh, the Grand Canyon and Arizona and skating, but like you got to see the Grand Canyon. And then yeah. like halfway there, like he was just like, pull over the car. This is breaking my head. <laughs> Yeah, like he so wanted good. a photo like every minute like pull over again well, pull yeah. over again we're like yeah, dude yeah, yeah, it's yeah, gonna dude. get better yeah yeah yeah. just <laughs> imagine imagine him you know he he's from Kilmes, which is like right next to uh to to the the city of buenos aires uh, -huh. uh it's it's a small small town he came to the states to visit. he bought a ticket for three months so we were in la when he showed up no mm. well, no, he showed up in SF, jumped on the van, and we drove straight to LA with Duffy and a bunch of other dudes. So just imagine his first impression of the stage is get in the van with Duffy. <laughs> uh, we skated all the spots, then we went back to SF, then we went to Europe for a whole month. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. we came back and we did the whole grand canyon arizona and all that stuff so like of course he was like breaking his head you know like every single experience was like he's the best yeah, dude he's just the like best man. smile yeah. always yeah. like so stoked yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. oh fuck yeah miss that dude um and then what was it like living in the garage with poncho muller <laughs> well i mean that that was our first uh, own apartment, you know, because before that, we would always be like couch surfing. So that was the first time that we were able to afford to live in a, in our own place. But yeah, it was a garage with the fucking shower in the kitchen, you know? Yeah. Uh, and we had and a bunk, bunk bed. Beds? And, yeah. I mean, it was like the worst, it was the worst place, but like it was our place, you know? And it was like in the mission, so we were able to just like go and skate. But before before we got that spot, it was actually uh, Joey's, Joey Terche's uh, uh -huh. uh, old place. Uh, 
we stayed at a crack house in, in like close to third and army and that was like the worst experience punch is like dude i got this friends that like we can just stay oh, with them yeah. and i'm like i'm like cool is, is it safe and he's like yeah yeah they live in a big house we can just like sleep in a basement it's all good and and it was like it was like a couple of blocks away from third and army but it was actually like a crack house you know it was like yeah a bunch of fucking hippies uh selling drugs and and so like you had that. to get like picked up, go to go to think or or thrasher and then like get dropped off because every time that Pancho will go out and, and try to go to the grocery store, he will get robbed. Yeah. So <laughs> like, like break yourself. <laughs> yeah, so that was that was kind of like a couple of weeks so, staying there, like sleeping on a basement with a, just a sleeping bag. Uh, it was it was not the best experience, but. But yeah, just imagine going from there to like the small garage that it was our, our spot. It uh -huh. was like the best place ever, you know? And Ponchi was partying pretty hard in those days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ponchi was getting hammered. Dude, we used to go to, what's it called, Cats Club, the 1984, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Ponchi was on the dance floor yeah, all night. Yeah, just just... yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, like, every Thursday. Well, I would just have to fucking carry him back to the to the apartment, basically. So that was sick. good. That was some good times. And then meeting Duffy was that the first time you met Duffy? The day that we went to China Banks and he backtailed it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that was insane. That was kind of like the first day that he met everybody. Yeah. Because I remember and, he was he was he living in SF at that time, or he was in LA. He no. Uh, oh yeah, I don't know because he flew in. I remember yeah. he flew in, yeah. and we met him at that ledge on uh, Army Street, mm -hmm. uh, Cesar Chavez, the you yeah. know the low one by the school. And then we're like, "What do you want to do?" And he's like, "I want to go to China Banks." And we're like, "What?" Yeah, 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 yeah. And I I I always tell this story, but it's still it's just so funny to me. His poncho looks over. He's like, "Hey, Schmitty." Duffy just looked over. He's like, fuck, I went from Ternaski to Schmitty. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you fucker. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. yeah, he was like, I went from Danny Way to Poncho. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, yeah. But Poncho. that back tail at China Banks was so sick, and we're just like, whoa. Yeah, freaking out about that. It was a good one. What about McKenny? And now, another first impression with Timothy Donald McKenney. First Impressions by Timothy Donald McKenney. Um, I'm pretty sure my first impression as Diego was maybe his first trip out here or something, or when he first got out here, and it was me walking into Jake and Luke's office, me sitting down in Jake's corner on his side. He was on the right side. Or at least that's where the monitor was. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure he was on the right side. And uh, him uh, turning on a video, VHS, old school style. It's Diego sponsor me or just his footy or whatever. And I'm looking at me, pretty much letting me know, hey, you're on your way out because the real killers are coming, bud. I remember the look on his face like, sorry, bro, your hash ass style is pretty much dead, dude. Your nose picks, that's 80s, bro. We're, gonna, we're going for kill yourself this year, bud. Toy machine style, you're out. That's my first impression of Diego, and he did. He came here and mauled it. Switch backside tail slides on hip high shit to shove it out. Uh, gnarly backside 180 kick flips over garbage cans on their side, the big square ones. Ask Schmitty, he'll tell you the stories. He was the one. Uh, other impression, like I said, he just fart Ponto going, he just farts all night. I'm going, yeah, you would too if you were all in down mountains like he does. Shout out, I love all y'all. What was your impression on McKenney? Well, McKinney was just like super wild. He was like a, a, a bomb about to explode every single time. So the way he skated, like the, the he was singing, he was like super loud. It was like a, 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 a good two to have around. Him and Pancho would just make fun of each other. It was like just comedy, going trips with, with them. Like it was just insane. And it's, it's super cool to see him skate. I was like, I was just look, watching some some footage that he uh, that he posted not that long ago. Uh, I think it was on Instagram or something. It's like a, it's like a like a full like you know cell phone clip, but it's like it's him just fucking going for it, slamming and screaming. It's like it's cool to see that 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 he still goes for it. You know, 
Dude, he just found skateboarding again, like uh, maybe a year or two ago. Now he he stopped for a while, and then he was like, "I'm back!" Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Sick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's he texts me every morning. He's so stoked. What about um, living in uh, L.A.? You moved in with Jaya. Yeah. So, so when I was in SF, I started to go uh, to San Diego a bunch. Uh, just because that that first year when we went to Argentina, we we met P Stone too. Like we met P Stone, uh, met Burnett. Um, I started to hang out with those guys a bunch, so I would just go uh, go to San Diego and stay with P Stone or Burnett. It was good for me to like get out of the city too and like meet meet new people and skate different places. And but yeah, I started to hang out with uh, with with P Stone a bunch. And Jai at that time was living in, the, in L.A., but, you know, he lived in SF. Um, so uh, he was, at that time, I was writing for Reef, uh, Reef Shoes, and Jaya was writing for Reef as well. Oh, so okay, we, yeah. We did a few, uh, a few trips together. He told me, you know, like I'm, we're splitting up with my girlfriend and I have a room available in my house if you want to just, you know, uh, move in and, and it was like, okay, cool. This was like three years after I lived in SF. I ended up like moving, moving with uh, with Jaya, and we lived there for like three years, I think, together. That was right off Melrose, right? Yes, it's really close to like where where Supreme and all those shops are. Oh yeah, Fairfax. Like a few blocks away, like three blocks away or something. Uh huh. Going from SF where you could actually like get on a bus or the tram or a train or whatever and just get around really easy uh, and being smaller, uh, just going to LA and like not having a car was like the worst fucking time ever. You know, like I would have to wait for people to come pick me up or it was, it was just the worst. Yeah. Um, there was nowhere to like skate around. It was like, it, it was weird. I mean, it was cool that, that in, you know, I ended up writing for Toy Machine after that, and I was able to travel with those guys a bunch. But when I was in L.A. Uh, with no car, it was just, like, really difficult, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, then then I got got the driver's license, and I moved to Long Beach, and that was, like, that was a little different, you know? And all the, all the Toy Machine guys live, like, really near, nearby me. Right. You bought a house in Long Beach, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But do yeah, you so, sell it or you still rent it? Yeah, I sold it. I actually sold it to Leo Romero. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we, I lived in that in that place, but I was never there. Um, and then, and then in two thousand and five, I moved to Barcelona, kind of like permanently, and I was just I kept my room there. Um, but then when I moved to Argentina, you know, like. Just paying a mortgage in the States, paying a mortgage in Spain, it was like too much and I, I had to get rid of it, you know. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so Leo has that and his place? I think so. I haven't yeah. I haven't talked to Leo for a while, but yeah, he, he got the house and then uh, he bought that one. He's probably renting it out or something. Give me some fucking um, reaction from, like, how do you think it was for Milton to be Skater of the Year? Like... Se enganchó como le gusta el probo con zurda. Coming from South America and like, is that a huge deal or is it like, how, what was that like? Do you think? Well, just he's Argentinian. Think, think about think about Milton. Like his dad had to. He's been, I mean, he's a generation older than myself. Um, so he was kind of like one of the first pros in Argentina. Milton's dad. Uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, tattoo. He was like one of the best at that time. Oh, shit. Uh, so he was like winning all the contests. He was like gnarly dude. Dating. He still like whips. Right. Um, so he had Milton when he, was, when he was 18, at super young age. So Milton like basically you know was fitted with skateboarding since he was born so that's all he knows it's like yeah. skateboarding you know his dad all his all his dad's friends skate then him his uh his 
younger brother Ezekiel, uh, and then his youngest brother Manu. They all skate. Uh huh. Then you know, his parents are split up, but his mom is going out with the dude that skates too. So it's like, and then Milton's kid, his daughter skates too. His, you know, the mother of his daughter skate. Like everybody, it's like full skate camp. Yeah, it's like seeing Milton. I mean, I, I didn't get to see Mil Milton when he was like too young because that was the time when I was in the states. Uh, But then I saw Milton like when I was going back to Argentina. I saw kind of Milton like going from like a tiny kid to someone who was like he had he definitely had the 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 potential to to become you know like the the the, the one of the the best dudes. Yeah, of course he was. He was like, uh, you know, uh, three times ahead of everybody. Uh, you know, with with skating, he was like three times faster, three times bigger, three times everything. Yeah, you know? and the only thing he needed was that push of going to the states, because he was like, you know, going to Brazil and going to like, but you need to go to the states and hang out and and. And and breathe skateboarding in the states because that's that's your you know the final test. Right. So if you make it in the states, if you if you like skate the gnarly spots in the states, if you're in the magazine, if you like you know if people likes you like in the states, it's that's it. You know, and mm-hmm. that's that's what happened to him. He did everything he could in Argentina until he like he saw that okay. The only way for me to like keep moving forward is going to the states and, and, and look how far he went. You know, like it's insane. It's like yeah. the, stuff that, the stuff that he did last year, and he's still doing. I'm sure it's stuff that like nobody's gonna be able to do for years. You know, yeah. Even, I mean, it's, it's gonna be even harder for him to like match what the stuff that he's doing. You right. Know, like. How much bigger or how much gnarlier can you get? You know, yeah. After breaking his leg, you know what I mean. It's like there's some stuff that he did in Argentina that, of course, people you know don't get to see uh, in person, and it's like you know as gnarly as some of the stuff that he did in the states. Yeah, it's sick. Uh, okay, well we're winding down. Um, Yeah, talk about the video part you and Roberto would film. Well, I I've moved back to to Spain uh, in uh, March of 2018. Uh, I mean, Roberto and I we've, we've been always skating together. We film parts together. We travel together and stuff. So um, mm. the year before I, I we moved back, uh, I told Roberto like you know you need to film a video part for Beastone. We're we're of course older. We haven't been filming much, um, but let's let's do it. You know, let's put our last, not our last, but at least like let's put the extra effort to film something for Keystone. And then like during that time, Jake passed as well. So it's like we we're like, well, you know, let's just do it for both of them. You know, but they were they were at different levels, but they were important for the both of for the both of us. Uh, for sure. um, so. So it was kind of like the, the the extra motivation that that we needed. So we mm-hmm. ended up kind of like at first it was like we ended up just kind of filming each other, yeah. um, like in a good like all days. And then uh, but then we met Bly, a guy from Barcelona, that he was like super down to film with us all the time. So we ended up just going going out with them. But you know, having a kid, having you know at that time I was like working for Nike too have my own or brand it was like really hard for me to find time to skate but mm. having that um that motivation like you just like some you know you you make your own time um so we ended up we ended up just filming it took us like you know about a year um with with all the travels all the trips that each of us had and we made it happen i mean It was it was days that like we'll we'll be trying a trick like dying like our legs were like that falling off, um, and we're like why are we even doing this you know like no we don't even have a I mean nobody's paying 
for it. And we don't have sponsors that pay us. I mean, I own my own brand, but it's like all I do, it's like ride boards for free, basically. Um, same same thing with Roberto. But it was like, we, we got to do it. You know, let's do it for, for Pistone and, and, and Jake. So it was like it was like definitely a, a, a really cool project to work on. But yeah, then we, we premiered it. And then like when we did the two premieres here, we were kind of like, Oh, man now what what are we gonna do because that was kind of like what keeps us moving you know yeah so now we're now we're whatever we actually got to skate the other day um dude and uh and he's he's the the, the spanish band's team manager now so i'm, I'm sure oh. he'll be able to do trouble more but good yeah yeah it's it's cool but yeah oh, it came been, out good man i was stoked uh, on it i wanted yeah. you guys to call it tio and che yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah but that yeah the, the name was like something that uh we thought that it was that it was cool because he was he said with all these be like you got it you got, got it, it. Yeah, i got, got it. it hey i got yeah, this so, one i got yeah, it so. yeah what's a do you got any i mean there's a million i know but any stories about p-stone that are personal for you that like you know i don't know, I don't know where you start but like if there's something i think i think I, I told this to like everybody, but Easton was definitely like the most influential person in my life, basically, you know, like because of all the stuff that I learned from him, from traveling, from eating, from trying to stay positive, from trying to make the, um, uh, the best out of, uh, out of every situation, whether it was like shitty or, 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 or good. And, and it's like how he treated people when he traveled like just everything about him was just like insane you know and we got you know we got to travel everywhere he stayed at my house for like in argentina maybe four or five times ate breakfast with my he was like part of my family basically you know what i mean mm -hmm. uh, so it's cool like a lot of people got to meet p-stone uh, they were like fortunate to 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 meet him because he was definitely one of those guys that like it's it's really hard to to find somebody like him for sure so, yeah i mean i have like a thousand stories and it's like it's weird because in every situation you can think of him you know like or you can even just say like uh this is how peace will react here you know what i mean when you're like feeling like oh shit, man i gotta sleep on the floor now and, and you're like no peace will be psyched you know what i mean it's like that. That's kind of like the, the the cool thing about about B Stone. Yeah, so. dude. Like all this stuff that he had prepared for, like he had the little uh, the fold up bag in his camera bag, like just in case of emergency. <laughs> like he had an extra sock. Like yeah. he had so many things. It was yeah. like, and he always had a beer hidden, like somewhere, yeah. like just in case for a fucking neutralizer. Yeah. I got to yeah. neutralize. Yeah, and then and then you know, like the 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 whole pack in for for trips. You know, like bringing four t-shirts, one sweatshirt, uh, shorts, one pants, and 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 fresh underwear and and socks for the way back. <laughs> but I was like, dude, what if it's like super cold? He's like, well, just wear four t-shirts and the sweatshirt. You know what I mean? <laughs> so he had it all like figured out. It was insane. I love the um, yeah. the fresh pair of pants for the <laughs> flight home. <laughs> he always kept one one fresh pair for the way back. Dude, one time I took him to the airport because he was going to go to Hawaii and yeah. he got a free flight because Anna's parents were working for United. Yeah. But yeah. to go on the free flight, it's standby. So you yeah. got to like dress nice. So yeah. he brought his suit with him and he got into the suit right when we got to the airport. But he hadn't been in the suit in like a bunch of years, so it was so small. And he was like squeezing into the suit, and he's like, I got it. <laughs> it was insane. <laughs> oh, man, I have oh, so man. many stories about the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you yeah. do too, and it's just yeah. like, oh, I don't know. Oh, no, I, that's the best part about him. Like, it sucks that he's gone 100%, yeah. but like, we're so fortunate to have so many stories to remember yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. can make you laugh and shit. Yeah, and, and he, he he will still be with us because of all those stories and all the 
dude, it, every, every, I basically every day, I, you know, he comes to my mind in, in, in different forms, but like, it's like, it's insane. It's insane. Like all the, all the fucking, all the trips, like everything. Like yeah. we even, we even like, cause I was, I was, uh, a couple of months ago. Well, I mean, last month we, uh, we had our 15th anniversary of, uh, of being married with my wife. Oh, sick. And we met, we met through Roberto, but I actually met Roberto through B-Stone. Right. So we were like, you know, without B-Stone, none of this would have happened, you know? Like Damn. It's, yeah. So the so same thing with like a thousand other things, you know, but uh, I started eating meat again because of B-Stone. I, a lot you of Got a barbecue. Come yeah, on, but you're the butcher. You gotta, you what are you going to not eat meat? Come on. You got to treat yourself. You loosen too much stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're missing out. So you got to eat this. You got to eat what's local. And I'm like, I always think about that. It's like whenever I go to like a random place, I'm like, I need to eat what's, you know, local from here. Like it's, I don't want to mm. eat fucking India. You know what I mean? Like I want to, yeah. It's like, yeah, it's, it's cool. It's a, a lot of like, um, good good uh good memories and good learnings from that dude for sure fuck yeah um what have you been doing recently like with all this shit going on like how are you staying positive like what are well, some things that you're helping you i mean uh since we moved back i was uh i was actually working for nike doing like a couple couple a bunch of different things uh-huh. uh, so the first couple of months i was like staying busy working from home um, with, with some of the accounts that I had to deal with. Uh, but then like uh, I did, for an example, I did um, three seasons of my, of my board graphics, you know, or I try to like stay creative and, and try to do things that maybe I don't, in a normal situation, I don't have the time to do it. Right. So it's like, that's, that's what I've been trying to do. Okay. You know, trying to you, like make the best out of out of everything. You know what I mean? It's all we can do. Yeah, do you, do you yeah. read it all or no? Uh, not 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 as as much as I wish. You know what yeah, I mean? But same. I, can, I mean, I was like something that I got into it. Like, I mean, I I did yoga in the past, but then like this this since we moved back, I was actually going to a yoga place. Um, but then with the with the lockdown, I couldn't go. So. I was just doing it at home in the morning, um, then like trying to work and stay stay busy during the day. Um, I don't know. That's that's like the only thing that you can do, you know. Yeah. There's there's For nothing sure. else. Try to stay healthy and and, and and healthy your mind too. Yeah. Just look at. Yeah. Man. There's a lot of there's still a lot of good shit going on, and you just have to focus on that stuff, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then just think, just think about like, you know, th- there's a lot of people losing their jobs now. There's like, um, uh, s- still like a bunch of stuff that it will happen with with this that it hasn't happened yet, and mm-hmm. we're lucky that within all this bullshit, like skateboarding, it's like it's doing good. You know, yeah, it's shops unbelievable. Don't have, shops don't have boards. Factories yeah. are like backdoor, you know, like they can't produce enough boards. So, you know, with all this bullshit that it's going on, we're like yeah. super lucky that skateboarding it's like surviving. Because in the 100%. beginning, like a lot of a lot of people were kind of like, I mean, everybody was kind of like, Dude, how can we help all the shops? Because it's like this is gonna be really bad for them, and it's like. Now you talk to all the shop owners and they're like, dude, this has been like the best, you know, um, mm-hmm. months for, for hardware sale in, in, in years. You know, I, mean, right. I don't know. I don't know what it was. Maybe because you can just buy a skateboard and like do a couple of always in front of your house and you're happy. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't honestly don't know what it is, but it's like, uh, it, it's good that it's happened. You know? Yeah. We're very fortunate. Yeah. 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 Uh, Quick question about uh, Oasis. Yeah. Favorite song? Uh, there, there's a, there's a few. Um, I'm going cigarettes and alcohol for me. Well, that's that's a good one, but but the thing is, like for me, when I grab a guitar, um, 
definitely oh, learning. Learning. it's 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 the first one that i learned and it's like the best one that i can play and sing so that's that's kind of like the one that i like and that's the one that my daughter likes too so it's like which one definitely maybe oh maybe, really maybe, yeah yeah that oh but, sick so that kind of it's like one of the easiest ones to play in, in the guitar you know have you seen the documentary yes it's so, so good. good so Dude. good no or liam yeah Liam. Liam? Always. Yeah. Always. <laughs> I don't like no. Really? Suck. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I like them. Fuck, yeah. 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 Um, well, dude, such a pleasure catching up. I haven't really talked to you in a while, and it was good to like oh, actually okay. see each other while we're talking and stuff. Yeah. Oh, I got to show you. Hold on one, one second. What do you got? Today, 66 6th Street... Holy we're, shit. we're doing the uh, release of Jake's Angel Dust. This is wow. this is fucking wow. the gold right here, man. It's so sick, dude. It's like Coco on the cover, Julian first front board yeah, on the, yeah, yeah, and yeah, then he yeah. he put like I don't want to ruin it for you, okay. but uh, yeah. there's like ads in there, and he wrote like the best. Or the worst ads from the mag, and like you're gonna lose your mind. It's he was, so sick. He was like the best at, do, at doing that, you know. It was yeah. like with with Jake, I feel like he either loved you or hate hated you. You know what I mean? And that was that was something that I really respected from him. It's like no bullshit. Like I don't yeah. like you, fuck you. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You knew where you stood. Yeah. If yeah, he was yeah, mad yeah, yeah, at you, yeah. you knew he was mad at yeah. you. Yes, and yeah, if he yeah. wasn't mad at you, you knew he wasn't mad at you. Yeah, yeah. There was yeah. no guessing. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Well, was, um, we're gonna take it out of here with a song. You can pick any song you want to play, like as we carry off into the sunset. Um, thanks, thanks. some Argentina hip hop or like some crazy Spanish punk rocker. Oh, or I don't do, uh, know. Let's do the Rata Blanca song. The Rata one Blanca that I from my time machine part. Oh That's yeah, okay. One that people likes. Hell yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Oh, and what's your daughter's name? India. India. Yes. Everything's going good with the family. Yes, yes. yes. Fuck yeah. My, my wife has a heart condition, so she's like a risky patient. So we oh, want to stay you away be from, careful. from Barcelona, you know. And since I'm doing all my boards in Madrid, it's actually closer from here um, oh. so i can like drive drive from here to madrid and, and work and then come back uh until like this whole bullshit happens we might we might stay here for a little bit but the but the goal is to stay in spain no more rg yeah yeah, yeah. no 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 oh. going back i mean my 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 grandma she's she will be 96 she's like Dude. really really uh she's in the last you know like uh, stretch but um uh -huh. can you zoom yeah. with her or facetime no 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 she don't she i mean she's like almost blind basically oh damn uh so i i called her through uh, uh through skype i just called her house uh -huh. uh, um but yeah i called her like every other day she's okay but she's got like you know like she's Dude, just 96. super old man. that's she's insane super old you know what i mean uh, it was never planned to go back for that that long, you know. Like we spent nine years there, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but it was like you know, I had a job there and I just couldn't leave. And there was always like a new opportunity to stay, and then you could go to Europe and blah blah blah. And then I got fired, so it's oh. like, yeah, it's fucking bullshit. But that's the way it works sometimes. Yeah, you know? yeah. So. Fuck. Are you, do you see any of the guys in Spain like Chucky or uh, Ibon? Actually, or fucking... actually Chucky, Chucky owns a shop in Valencia. So oh, it's really? A, I, yeah, I mean, I, for, for, for a little while I was doing uh, I was doing the sales for Nike SB here. Uh -huh. I, was, I was his rep. Um, no way. And now, and now I sell in uh, Cleaver, you know, like, so I'm, I'm in touch with them. In Madrid. What about uh, Noro? I haven't seen Nor in like <laughs> a long. He's fucking nuts, man. The craziest guy he's, ever. He's so crazy. I like love I, him, I've been back so for like two and a half years, and I haven't seen him yet. Oh, because he lives he lives in Girona, and it's he's always fucking great. I mean, trying to do uh -huh. 
he, he works at building skate parks. So he, uh, oh, he okay. traveling, but I don't, I don't even know where he is now, honestly. <laughs> but yeah, the dude's fucking nuts. nuts. But All yeah, right. uh, uh, I, I, I know that Roberto went to Bilbao the other day and saw Yvonne. Oh, sick. Yeah, he's still crazy. Yeah. He's uh, on Instagram. He's ripping though. He's skating yeah, a little yeah, still. Yeah, yeah. He's Sick. probably crazier than ever, but, but right. Yeah, <laughs> I need cool a haircut. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's the cool thing about here is that that all the guys from my generation are still like, you know, skating. Yeah, at a, at a different level maybe, but uh, but they're still like, you know, we have a, we have a, a WhatsApp group with like all those dudes. And it's it's always uh, LeBron, actually, LeBron too. Like I was getting with them like a, a week ago. Oh, um, sick! But, and uh, Javi, all those guys. Javi is, I think, is in Bilbao now. Yeah. But yeah, we we all try to get it together. The giraffe. That's, that's yeah, rad. Retired skateboarders. Fuck yeah! Um, yeah, that's cool. I mean, we actually did a did a trip to the Canary Islands. All the all the like the older skaters. No way. We were there, yeah, we were there for a few days. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, we were trying to do another trip, but like this fucking bullshit hit, so. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Well, hopefully this shit will get better. Hopefully yeah. sooner than later. And uh, yeah. we'll all be able to get out and fucking intermingle again. Yeah, 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 yeah. The boards is going good? Yeah. It's pretty insane with this whole situation. I mean, at first I was like, since I started doing them in Argentina, and then when I moved here, I started the business kind of in my own. Um, because over there, I had like a the the wood factory was the one kind of like distributing the boards. Yeah. Um, so it was like basically what Ed does with Toy Machine. He does all the art and all the team and everything, but then like Swank owns seventy percent of the brand. You know. Right. Uh, but when I moved here. I basically registered the brand here and I started on my own selling some of those boards to, uh, to you know, FTC or Welcome, the ones in Madrid. So I was doing the boards with, with the small brand in, in Zaragoza. But then I started to add more shops and I started to sell more boards. And, and now it's like I always wanted to make my boards in the States. So like I, somehow I ended up like reaching out to, uh, to Bruce while well, making the boards, the boards with them. So it's, and then I mean, he sends now them to that Spain? I don't have the Nike job, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, they're fucking, the, the boots are super good. Damn. I think we're going to make a McKinney reissue. Dude. Maybe we'll hit up Rod- Rodella. Yeah, 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 you should. Well, send me the information for your, like you have a website and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, send me that stuff, and when we put this, I'll put, include it or whatever, or photos of the boards or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and the cool oh. thing, it's like Milton's middle brother. It's the only pro I have on the brand. Oh, sick. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's 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 kind of cool. But yeah, I'll send you all this stuff. All right, dog. Well, thanks for taking the time. Yeah. So good to talk to you, man, always. Yeah, same, same, same here. Just hit me all up right. anytime. Okay, same. All right, later. Stay safe, dude. All right, bye, later. later. Thank you for listening to another episode of Talking Schmidt. You can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Anchor, Spotify, or anywhere you get your podcasts. When you subscribe, you'll get notifications every Tuesday of new episodes the minute they become available. Also, please leave reviews and a five-star rating. It's the best way to help the show grow. All of the episodes will always remain free, but if you would like to help support the show, you can do so at TalkingSchmidt.com where you can pick up some merchandise like t-shirts, beanies, hats, and stickers. The website has an entire archive of all of the episodes, with extra photos and videos. Email us with any suggestions, comments, or ways that the show may have improved your life at talkingschmidt at gmail.com. All interviews are conducted, edited, and produced by Schmitty. The intro music is Mary's Cross by the band Nature. A very special shout-out goes to the executive director, Cheryl Camisa. Shout out. Love it! This is Talking Schmidt, where the Rolodex is deep, but the conversation is deeper.